Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, uh, Director, if you wanted to give it one more minute and then uh, we could start, but um, um, it's great that so many people have uh, signed on so far, so uh, I know there's been a lot of interest in the project. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, and all those uh, on the call. I, I agree. We could wait a few more moments and we get started. All right, why don't we uh, uh, get started? Um, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Mayor Reed Gassiora um, from the city of Trenton. And uh, thank you for the uh, coming to the Stuyvesant Avenue um, uh, rehabilitation project. Uh, back in October of uh, 2021, um, a number of uh, directors uh, led by uh, um, our Housing and Economic Development Director, uh, C. Andre Daniels, uh, led a group uh, down a tour of um, uh, Stuyvesant Avenue uh, between Parkside and uh, Prospect Street. We walked down and we talked to many of the neighbors and uh, business owners, uh, but we took inventory of 68 properties um, that were needing of rehabilitation uh, that were vacant, had been abandoned for many years. Um, a handful of them are owned by the city of Trenton because of, uh, of uh, tax liens and just uh, out and out abandonment and like. Some are owned in private ownership that are simply holding on to these properties. Uh, but nonetheless, they've, they've added to the uh, blight in the neighborhood. And in the last uh, 24 months, uh, we've had at least four homicides there, uh, uh, drug activity, um, and just nuisance properties, squatters, and the like. And uh, we've decided to um, uh, address the 68 uh, houses. And that's the reason why we're having a community uh, meeting, because we wanted to get the community's input about uh, what to do about those properties. Um, the city, uh, we did put a proposal before council to declare the entire uh, area in need of rehabilitation um, 
uh, but council voted that down. That's their prerogative. Uh, so we are addressing the houses one by one. Had they be an area of uh, rehabilitation, we could have de dealt with them all 68 houses at the same time. We don't necessarily want to change the uh, uh, landscape of the neighborhood, but we we believe that every neighborhood in the city should be safe and uh, people should feel um, that uh, any abandoned houses uh, on their on their uh, blocks are taken care of. Uh, what we'd like to do is uh, take down the ones that we cannot um, cannot rehabilitate. We'd like to rehabilitate the ones we can and return them to the fabric of the neighborhood. We're not looking to um, necessarily turn them into units, but also um, have affordable options for um, uh, new people to move into the neighborhood. Um, uh, if, if anything, it would enhance the values of the properties in the neighborhood. Uh, people would feel a lot safer, and um, we wouldn't have these nuisance uh, properties that uh, that get gang activity and um, and other um, other problems that are caused by for public safety and the neighborhood alike. So I want to turn this over to um, uh, our director, C. Andre Daniels, um, that will describe what we did and. Um, and then uh, we're going to open it up uh, for questions or comments. And um, it's a good opportunity to have a conversation with uh, uh, that with those who are concerned about the, the state of the neighborhood and how we can make things better. Thank you very much. Um, if I could, I could, if I could ask so that everyone um, uh, uh, can hear the uh, people who are participating, if you could remain on mute. Uh, if you're not uh, taking part in this. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you, uh, Mayor. Good afternoon to all um, under the sound of my voice. I want to thank you for taking this uh, time um, to come on and uh, be part of this informational session. Uh, the mayor is correct. Uh, on uh, August, uh, October, I'm sorry, October uh, 12th of uh, 2021, responding to uh, a myriad of complaints um, by several residents, uh, uh, myself and the mayor's cabinet um, got together uh, to discuss uh, Stuyvesant Avenue and, quite frankly, other areas within the city that we needed to look at, that we needed to target and see what we could do to, to make the area better. It would be on October the 12th. Uh, join, <clears throat> I asked the mayor to join me. Uh, there also joining me was uh, Dr. Adele Lopez, the director of Health and Human Services. Also asked the police director, Director uh, Wilson, to join me and several people from my department. Um, also had out there uh, Mr. Michael Valiant, um, who heads up my demolition program, and uh, Elmer Sandoval, who works very closely with him on a lot of these hazards and, and blights uh, throughout the city. The purpose was, was really simple. How could we restore uh, a once uh, beautiful block, uh, uh, a gateway uh, area, if you will, um, starting on one side from Cadwall to Park and on the other side, um, Prospect. Um, how could we possibly rehabilitate the blight while at the same time um, responding to the urgency of need to, uh, if you will, uh, lessen the opportunity for those who, quite frankly, um, wanted to create additional hazards, and I'll put it that way, I'll, 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 I'll be ecumenical in, in my advancements here. Um, who would occupy some of the uh, empty uh, houses by way of porches and other areas. How could we ameliorate that um, in, in a fashion that uh, would also be respectful of those tenants, quite frankly, who live, work, and play to and, and take care of their, their homes? So we took a tour down um, Stuyvesant Avenue, and we came across 68 units um, that were in various uh, degrees of uh, disrepair 
Um, we identified some immediate nine to 10 properties that we felt uh, represented imminent hazards, meaning those light quality hazards that if um, left undone um, could cause harm, uh, imminent harm to uh, neighbors or anyone quite frankly passing by. Uh, we were also concerned with the imminent, uh, well, with winter coming on, that sometimes we understand that um, our, our neighbors um, without uh, addresses sometimes uh, seek shelter. And in doing so, um, fires and other things happen. To that end, um, I, you know, we, we identified those structures and we wanted to come um, to council with a comprehensive plan that just simply was asking for permission from the council to enjoin a study. And quite frankly, the meeting that we're having right now uh, was going to happen. We could not have moved um, deliberately or decisively to, to make any kind of conclusions uh, and join in any kind of decision making without uh, including the community as part of the discussion um, and discovery process. Um, it is now that uh, the administration and, and myself, we felt as though, hey, let's uh, give a, a forum by which questions could be asked and, and answered. Um, if, in fact, uh, there's a question that can't be answered on this call, uh, I will take your name, information, and get right back to you. But I feel as though that we have a cadre of folks on the call uh, that have the capabilities to answer. Um, and and it, what I'll do is, uh, at the top of the order, uh, I know that I have the assistant um, city attorney, uh, Sally Samuel. She's on board. We have the supervisory planner, uh, for the department, Jeff Wilkerson, he's on board. We have the, the facilitator of demolitions for the city, uh, Mr. Michael Valiant, he's on board as well. And I did forget one other person, Mr. Michael Colbert uh, from the planning department, he is on board as well. Um, and, and advancing the resolution, I'll read the narrative. Resolution requesting the planning board of the city of Trenton to undertake a preliminary investigation to determine whether vacant and or abandoned structures within a proposed Stuyvesant Avenue study area qualify as an area in need of condemnation redevelopment. And that was specifically to those houses that were abandoned uh, and or vacant. It did not include, uh, obviously, properties or dwellings um, that were occupied. So to that end, um, if anyone have any specific questions, let's get it started and let's get into it. Um, I could add, add to it, Director, and, and thank you for your, your comments. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Teams doesn't allow us to get bring up Google, Google um, but I would encourage everyone to uh, go onto Google Maps and you can see some of the properties yourself, on, uh, especially on Street View. Uh, but for instance, um, uh, challenges, uh, many are row homes, some are individual uh, commercial properties. And if you go to 478 Stuyvesant Avenue, that's owned by the city of Trenton. Um, uh, and while we can't exactly take that down because we have to worry about the sidewalls with the uh, house next door, which is 476, and while that's uh, um, uh, vacant, it's un owned by private uh, ownership. Um, we're, we've decided that if there are any city liens, such as taxes or water bills and the like, um, we would exercise our right to foreclose on those properties so that we could address uh, the properties. What we intend to do is um, we would either auction them off or um, rehabilitate them ourselves, or um, if they can't be saved, the structures can't be saved, they're too far gone, 
uh, we would demolish them and and then um, uh, leave the area for or let the area um, uh, bring in developers to see who would want to put houses that are that are in those places. Uh, so there's 68 opportunities uh, to get 68 uh, properties back on the tax rolls, which will be helpful for the city, uh, but also be helpful for the neighborhood. I know there's been a lot of interest in uh, some of the properties, um, but we do need to um, uh, uh, have an overall plan, which we do, um, to address these properties. And uh, if if council does not uh, pass the rebuild, uh, the, the redevelopment ordinance, uh, we would then just address them one by one. And that's what we're prepared to do right now. Thank you. I'll tell you what we're going to do um, until we get some questions. Um, for, okay, I think I may have one. Hey, Reid, it's Janie Weekland. Uh, question, have you guys sat down with the people that actually live in the neighborhood to see what they want? Yeah, this is this is part of the process. We um, uh, put flyers out in the neighborhood. Um, we, we put postings on social media. Um, and when all of the directors walked down the street, there were uh, probably over well over a dozen about 15 people uh, walked down the street. We were talking to the um, residents. We were also talking to the business uh, community. All of them want those properties addressed. I, I would invite anybody just to drive down Stuyvesant Avenue, and you could see for yourself uh, the deplorable conditions of some of these properties. And um, this has been like that for many, many years. We talked to people who lived, grew up in that neighborhood, and they said that they could, they would walk to school, they would walk to church, um, that it was a very safe neighborhood and livable neighborhood and very cohesive neighborhood. Um, but over the years, uh, went into a lot of, a lot of the blocks just went into, just simply into decay. Um, and the other unfortunate thing is that there are many privately owned abandoned properties. Uh, that the owners are just letting sit there. There are some instances where they're paying property taxes, they're paying the vacant property uh, fees, but they refuse to do anything. They're just hanging them on for uh, investment purposes. So we want to go in earnest with inspectors uh, to make sure that uh, private property owners are keeping up their properties. Uh, but if they don't own them, we'll, we're more than happy to take over them and um, utilize money that we were given by the state to either demolish the houses or to rehabilitate them. If we rehabilitate them, um, we can then turn them over to private ownership again. Um, and what we what is best for us is to have private owners. We don't want investment property owners um, to just uh, exacerbate the conditions. But talking to the neighbors, absolutely. Um, putting everyone on notice to invite them to take part. Uh, we have 50 people on online right now. So that's, I think that's a pretty good um, indication that the word did get out and that there is interest in what, what happens on, on, uh, on this, uh, on this street. Okay. Just because, you know, they may want to park in there, you know, not necessarily houses rebuilt, but something for their kids. Yeah, there, well, there, are, there is uh, there is park space there um, at towards the end of the block, more, more towards uh, Prospect. Um, if if we can get the uh, the the area rehabilitated, uh, the city could actually invest in that park space. That's that's there. There's a, a large vacant lot that that is a green space um, that is woefully underutilized. Okay, thank you. I think next we have Mr. Abdullah. Yes. They got me. Hello? Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah. Abdullah. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, well, then, um, 
for you say that you there was fifteen plus people that you know were part of the walk down the block. Um and exactly what were their their wants? Like did they say what they wanted exactly? They just wanted to upgrade or they wanted to like get a park or were uh, community service areas or a thing to do? Well, um, here's one instance. We talked to um, the proprietor of Timbuktu Academy, and um, it's a wonderful resource for the city. It's a, 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 a daycare and nurse uh, elementary school of sorts uh, for young uh, women uh, where they teach um, sewing skills and just life skills and socialization. And um, if you talk to some of the, the parents that bring their children there, they look across the street and they see um, drug activity. Um, they see uh, people that's sitting on the, the porches that really shouldn't be there. Um, uh, they don't want their children leaving that school and seeing that um, uh, the conditions of the neighborhood like that. They don't want the kids to be in fear of going to um, that school. And so we agree that um, the, the houses right across the street from Timbuktu need to be addressed. They're abandoned, uh, but they're used for uh, drug activity and, and uh, uh, people that um, just want to hang out and, um, and uh, cause a nuisance. So uh, right there and then they said, could you please address the abandoned houses directly across the street? and go there yourself um or uh, more encouraging is to go to an activity at timbuktu I, I had a chance to attend a fashion show there and um just to see the um the young ladies that uh, go to the school there the hope and the, the dreams that they have and then they look out and they see despair so they would like those houses addressed they would like them either uh, shut down or abolished or or rehabilitated. And if a homeowner moves into the houses across the street, that's less of a place to um, uh, to hang out, to uh, become a nuisance for the neighborhood, um, to have uh, drug and alcohol parties on the porch because they know it's an abandoned piece of property. But you could literally see that. And and afterwards, we I, we did drive there at night and to see the activity that that occurs there. So it is a shame that it's it's happening right across from a school. Um, and um, they actually helped us on an abandoned property next door, which was a commercial property that was abandoned, um, that they had drug activity in there. Uh, the city was able to board that up. Uh, but we would love to rehabilitate that commercial property on the corner and um, and lease it out or or sell it to a, a, a prospective um, business person that would like to run that store again. There are apartments upstairs um, and they could be homes for people. So I, th I think every single person that we talk to wants those abandoned houses addressed. They want them either torn down or rehabilitated. Um, now, everybody. Um, and we even talked about the gentrification word, the G word. We are not trying to gentrify that neighborhood. We're just trying to make that neighborhood safe. Um, and that neighborhood, uh, we're not trying to encourage people to move out of the neighborhood. Um, there, there are people that have lived there, like I said, all their life. They've invested in their properties and they feel that uh, their own properties are devalued. Uh, because there are abandoned and decaying buildings and structures that are either next door to them or across the street. But we did get a lot of comments and um, they were all constructive. And um, there's great hope for that neighborhood um, if we could rehabilitate those 68 properties. 68 properties are a lot. I go to a school and sometimes I ask the school children, how many people live on a block with an abandoned home? And everybody, including the neighbor, raised raised their hands. And um, no matter who you talk to um, uh, in this city, uh, there is a large complaint about the abandoned and vacant properties that that um, drag down their entire neighborhood. Director, could I uh, add to the mayor's comment?
Sorry about that, Mike. I was muted. Sure, go ahead. Right, go right ahead. Yeah. So, Mr. Abdul, the the mayor definitely touched on it, like de- absolutely how we're doing this holistically. But I just wanted to give you like a, a quick illustration, also what we're doing actively now. So let's take for example the 800 block of Stuyvesant, where we own. Uh, it looks like about another 12 properties between 800 and like, you know, it would be like 900. So with those properties, we are going through each of them, like with a cost estimator and myself, I have some construction experience. The senior cost estimator has decades of it. And when we go through, we are looking to create a work order on rehabilitating those properties. Now you might be wondering, how do we decide what's the demo what's worth saving that's exactly where it comes into talking to the community and talking to the homeowners that might have a property adjacent or um it might be it's uh, you know a duplex structure might be a corner lot a lot of these things people definitely have ideas on how they want to use that that land and how it's also going to kind of flow into the community as new construction comes in uh another example that comes to my mind is the 732 stuyvesant ave which is that big uh, residential house. It looked like it must have been some sort of group home, and it has that big green lot, and it's next to that, I believe, a church. And so, you know, for like while we go in there to redress the structural concerns, and like, you know, can we save this or not? It's also, you know, we are taking into account, you know, is this big area most conducive to the whole neighborhood as just one lot with one residence on it? Um, and that is that you know so that's just a window into the thinking of like when we're going into redress you know big groups of properties nothing's really uniform in fact everything comes in with that personal touch of the people that we're visiting while we're doing those field inspections you may have seen elmer myself uh we usually have the, the van you know with the vest we're going into the building um so we're really trying to definitely take the dollars and cents approach as we go into every building you know is this structurally sound or not but then the next follow-up question is like, how does the rehab, you know, is it conducive to the community that's there now and for it to come after? Not necessarily just, you know, putting another house in a 12-foot lot because, you know, that's what was there before. So I just wanted to add that comment, sir. Thanks, Mike. I Mr. Abdullah, does that uh, answer? Hi, am I able to add a question or ask some questions? Uh, ma'am? Ma'am, if, if I could, um, I, I'm try to add some degree of order here. I uh, just wanted to make sure Mr. we answered Mr. Abdullah's question. Uh, yes, and the time frame, like, uh, you know, the proposals, so how, like, once the construction yeah. or destruction starts, like, what's the Absolutely. exact time frame? Because you don't want to tear down something and say you're going to build it up, and it takes, you know, too long to build up. And I actually have this as well, if you guys can see. Look closely. Timbuktu Academy. Hey, That's right. yeah, I, went, <laughs> I, I grew up around there, so I was born and raised around the area, and I went there as a kid. And um, you know, so I love my community, and I'm always forward to seeing, you know, more and more greatness uh, come about. Right. So, uh, right. We want you to, when you go back to alumni activity there. We want you to be proud, and we want you, and we we would love to help uh, uh, Timbuktu itself uh, need some exterior work. Um, but that could be part of the, the process as well. All right, and a, the time frame? Um, you guys have well, time frame? The, this is the beginning process. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And um, the first was taking an inventory of the 68 homes. And uh, now we're going to uh, address the, uh, um, the first houses that, are, that cannot be saved. Uh, that need to be taken down. So those are going to be done first, and then we're going to start looking for contractors, local contractors, to help us rehabilitate the properties that can be. Uh, this will take a number of years uh, to do, um, but again, the process starts with uh, one step, and this is why we're having this community meeting, and we're even going to have follow-up community meetings as well. And uh, Newark has had some wonderful success with it, um, so if you do talk to council people, um, you, you could encourage them to uh, look into the land banking. But again, Google Newark Land Bank, and you can see how they wonderfully hey, inventory how every abandoned property, and yeah. um, hey, the hey, land bank it. itself is able to dispose of those properties. And so you don't have to auction them off. You can interview people. You can 
Um, you have a lot more leeway on how you dispose of them. And I agree, the auction way is not the ideal way to go. Uh, so you have no argument from me. Thank, Thank you. you. Could I ask Paul uh, on, the, on this call? Me? Yes, ma'am. Hold on. Hello, Hello oh. ma'am. Yes. Can I ask all that are not speaking at the moment to please mute your phones? It's a little hard. We're getting a lot of extraneous background um, noise. It would be helpful. Thank you. Next, we have the Trenton Business Association. Okay, hi. I'm not actually the Trenton Business Association. I'm just a Trenton business, <laughs> but I use that as my um, uh, my name. Um, do I need to Thank state my name and address or anything like that? It'll be uh, nice, nice to have your name. <laughs> oh, uh, Ms. Saldry. Thanks. Um, but um, and I've I've met um I've met uh, Mayor uh, Gustiori. I'm sorry, I'm not good with that name. Um, so you know, we have some discussions about this, and it's good to see this really productive discussion. And I like to see, first of all, I just want to comment. I like to see things be productive. You know, uh, we don't need gridlock. We don't need a lot of these arguments. We have too much to do. There's just too much to do right now in Trenton. We don't have time. We 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 do. We are not in neighborhoods where we have. The, the time and the luxuries of, you know, having, you know, 18,000 meetings over, you know, t a 10 square foot spot. We, we're just not there. And um, I, I mentioned this at another meeting, but I'm concerned about these buildings because they're at a point in their time life and time span where they are beginning to deteriorate. Um, not that they haven't been, but, you know, now is it's really, it, it's so time sensitive uh, for a number of reasons, but that's one of them. Um, but um, I wanted to just mention about, you know, like, um, a couple of things. I'm so glad this meeting is happening, um, and I wanted to to find out how we can how this can be made more efficient. And the reason I say that is because I've been attempting for the last like three three years um, to get in touch with people like real estate, and this is like up at the municipal building and stuff like that. I've reached out to um you know the real estate development office. I've reached out to housing offices. I've reached out to um, you know whoever I thought would have the the right direction um you know to send me in to try to get people's hands on these properties not through the auction process although that's you know a feasible option but and the reason i wanted to do this is to try to get it connected to people that i know of and so i wanted to get some responses and find out like um why is it what can be why is it difficult and what can be done to put these houses in and it, it, get it in people's hands. They can benefit from them. They can do something productive with it. Um, and I'll give you three examples. Um, I work with a nonprofit which can't seem to get their hands on a Trenton house. You know, our non well, it's not my nonprofit, but this nonprofit that I help is ready to go. We have contractors ready. We have people with, with long contracting experience. You know, if this place, if this, it's an anti-drug nonprofit, you know, for rehab, if this place could be given just one of these buildings on Stuyvesant, I know they could do something positive with it, you know, and I don't understand, I, like, why is that not happening? Um, I get, you know, I'll give you another example. Um, I, I know someone who is Trenton raised, Trenton schooled, um, used to be, used to um, uh, uh, actually be a former renter of mine, recently got his uh, real estate license. This is someone who, and actually started, you know, started, uh, besides doing his real estate right, license, he does other things besides, you know, coordinate rentals and coordinate purchases. Um, so, you know, he's a trend success. He's a trend success, you know. Um, he has also a lot of local experience because of being, you know, raised in trend and going to, to trend schools. Why can't we give, connect people like him instead of, distant and outside and, and uninvested emotionally and uninvested in other manners and investors, why can't we connect some of these houses to someone like him? Um, so, so I want to know how this process can be made more efficient. I hear the same language every time when I go to these meetings. You know, we, we have to do something about this, uh, these houses and the blight and the this and the that. And then I call them and I'll be like, we'll take this house today. You know, just cut us a deal because we don't necessarily uh, stand on those kind of finances where we can spend 80000 110 150000 However, if you give us a chance, and this is me, this is this, this former renter of mine who now owns his own real estate development company uh, along with someone else from Trenton, if you give them half a chance to have any of these properties, they will pay you back over time. Like, why can't something like that be set up? What, Ms. what, Ms. what Trudry, happens is we yeah. just all get taken out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Ms. Trudry. Um, and and yeah. hire local, and hire local. <laughs> Absolutely. We have to follow the law. So without it being a, a area in need of rehabilitation, 
or redevelopment area, we have very little options other than to put the properties up for auction, and then they're fairly auctioned off. If they were a rehabilitated area or an area in need of rehabilitation, we can individually make deals with, with people, or if they're in a land bank, you can make individual deals. Absent that, the only way you could procure those properties is through the auction process. So we agree with Octavia, we agree with you, that it should be an area for redevelopment so that we could make individual deals with people and find the best people to take over those properties. Right now, we can't. The only way we can get rid of those properties is through an auction. That's correct. And, and is, there, uh, is there any I'm method sorry, ma of it? Man, yes. if you don't mind, I wanted to supplement the mayor's mayor's point. You also mentioned about working through gridlock or without it. And so uh, let me tell you how we actually change things in, in in within how we do business to be much more efficient and like and how Stuyvesant actually is an example of that play. So, for example, like the first thing that we did was get the gridlock out of our workflow. So what we did was we got a real inventory system for actually monitoring these properties. And, I, and that's not just checking them on Google Maps. That's physically going out, going inside, taking pictures, examining the roof, examining how much, you know, humidity and stuff like that has been in these buildings. You know, getting real constructive analysis of what we're working with. Next was then, you know, if there might be a lot of people here that work in real estate and contracting, and you know that if we're going to be doing big structural work, you got to have a good connection with PSC and G and Trenton Water to make sure that you can get those utilities disconnected to then get real work started. And that's what we did next. We got uh, over like 200 uh -huh. properties throughout the city, connect, uh, you know, and we have a real system and actually forwarding them to PSC and G and Trenton Water timely so that they have the time to get these done sort of on our schedule. And that way we can move into quarterly goals, not necessarily just, you know, the next one. And then the last thing that I wanted to like kind of highlight in terms of like removing the gridlock and how we do our business was that we have a game plan, which is like the mayor is exactly talking about getting that area as a strategic redevelopment area means that it's not necessarily we can only just do deals, but we can actually work with the undersized lots more effectively, work with homeowners more effectively. It's not necessarily just about deals, but it's about effect effectively getting those properties and those rateables to the, you know, the appropriate owner. Um, and then like Stuyvesant, if that's like, you know, if the game plan is how we do redevelopment in the city and Stuyvesant's the play, it's dealing with the imminent hazards that we can now. That's where we have actionable work to do. We got those prices and bids back. We expect to get that out uh, for a council vote next month. Um, that, you know, that is a real deliverable we have. The next one with writing up those work order specs for the rehabs for the exact contractors that you're talking about, you know, we feel that what, how we're going to release this work and schedule it out is going to be highly competitive for local contractors because, you know, the one thing that between demo work versus rehab work is the machinery that you need. And it's just, you know, the scope and scale. But if we're doing rehab work, which we do have, plenty, you know, two sources of funding for, we can actually have, you know, ensure that these projects are competitive and for qualified contractors in the city of Trenton to bid. So that's all That's all I wanted to add on that. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you, Mike. No, no issues. Can, can I follow up? Thank you for responding to both questions. Just one second. I had one more issue. Um, can I finish mine and then... If we can just get everyone else and then we can come back to you, but we'd like to get as many people's comments as possible. Okay, next we have Mr. Um, Albert Matlock. Thank you for those those questions, ma'am, and, and we'll get back to you. How do I get on the list to ask a question? Um, all you have to do is uh, raise your hand. There's a... Uh, uh, if you look I'm on the on top of your phone. I'm on my phone. Okay. Um, well, uh, the director will Can get I have you. Your name? I'm sorry? Can I have your name, ma'am? My name is Lisa Toro. Lisa Toro. Okay. Thank you. I'll call on you shortly. Thank you. I guess my, my question is to follow up to Mike's comments relating to the sourcing, um, the two sources of funding. Can you just share um, what those funding sources are and then also Mr. Yeah. Oh I, I actually I got it. He was looking for funding source.
uh, he was looking for funding sources. And um, we were given, uh, uh, at the end of the Christie administration, we were given $11 million um, to demolish homes. And uh, we're in the process of, of demolishing the worst uh, houses in, in Trenton. I think we've done well over 200 so far. We got permission from HMFA uh, to um, rehabilitate houses because we said there are some that we don't want to demolish, but we'd like to rehabilitate, and we're using that. We also um, collect vacant property fees. Um, if, if you're a homeowner that owns a home and then it's vacant, you have to pay a vacant property fee, and we've amassed, um, uh, I think, well over million, possibly two million there um, uh, that we're using also for this. So the city does have funds. Uh, the state is willing us to help with us more uh, on more. Um, we're also working with some community groups, uh, especially for rehabilitation, um, and that we're, we're starting a, a program to rehabilitate homes and then turn them over to um, uh, persons that are looking for affordable housing. And that is able to generate grant money. So there are funding uh, mechanisms that we do have. We want to make it the most easy, easiest uh, to release these properties back to the public so that they can, we can get the right fit um, for, for new home ownership in the city. Yeah, I guess that was going to be my other follow-up question is just how are you guys, like, what's the vision for, you know, your what's your vision for this area and what you're expecting to see it? Are you looking for more, like, home ownership? Are you looking for, you know, opportunities where there could be, you know, more modern modern housing in the area, more more duplexes or, you know, areas where people can kind of see investment? But then in, in addition to that, it just can't just be the housing. What brings people to the housing? It's going to be the jobs. It's going to be the amenities. What are the things that you guys have in mind for that? And I think that that, I mean, maybe that's partnering with, you know, the business community in, in Trenton. But I think, can you just share some light on how, like, the direction that you have when it comes to providing employment, which then will lead to, obviously, improving housing? Yes, this is a real opportunity to use local contractors. Um, but I, ideally, we want to bring them back to home ownership. Uh, we just don't want necessarily rentals. Um, and then as far as uh, to do duplexes, we would need a number of houses together to take them down. If, if there's a, a, a row of four houses that need to be taken down, you create a lot that you could um, um, make a better use of to um, have a multiple do dwelling there on that, on that lot. Uh, the commercial uh, properties, we're hoping uh, there are a lot of uh, business people that are coming into the city to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, to Director Daniels. They want to uh, they want they're looking for a business uh, opportunity. Um, some of the properties on Stuyvesant Avenue are commercial properties. We would, you know, if you look on a lot of the corner properties, they're com they were once commercial buildings. We'd like to rehabilitate them in, in some instances and then uh, turn them back to um, a business community. Um, you guys, so that is our vision. Have you guys identified any business like industries or, you know, kind of like that will be conducive to that community and to that area? Um, I guess, obviously you want to have small businesses as, a, as well, but maybe like a grocery, fresh food, um, grocery chains. Those are, those are some additional pieces that are kind of, I guess, needed within that community. So have you guys discussed conversations or have, you know, maybe talked to consultants or anything to kind of kind of have an idea of who has interest in this area and if they will be willing to, you know, invest in that area? Yeah, there, there are actually uh, a funding mechanism in federal and state dollars uh, to deal with the void in, uh, in food uh, options. So, um, we would love to have a, a small grocer come in and, and take over one of the corner uh, buildings. Um, they could also have uh, make a nice office uh, for uh, uh, properties. Ms. Chadre talked about a nonprofit moving in uh, to, to some of the commercial uh, buildings. So um, all of the above, um, we're open. But the first thing is, uh, you as a business person would rather not take over an abandoned home or abandoned building that you have to rehabilitate yourself. So if we could uh, meet in the middle and help rehabilitate the property, you're more likely to um, 
uh, take that that uh, building off our hands and we'll go back into the tax rolls. Uh, but you could better use your your capital um, to um, do the minimal repairs necessary uh, with the city's help uh, to bring back that that commercial building to life. Last question, how much time do you have for that amount of money, the sourcing that you guys mentioned, two sources? Is it, you know, in the next five years, is it the next two years? Um, how quickly do you have to disperse and utilize that? Um, we're, we're working in earnest, um, but it realistically, it probably would take as long as five years. Um, we would love to wave a magic wand and get uh, a lot of balls in the air at once. Um, uh, but we have to be selective and we want to uh, really target local contractors um, so that they can create local jobs. So um, that that's going to take longer. Uh, there are plenty of businesses out there that want to come into the city and swoop up the properties and redevelop them. Uh, but they tend to bring outside um, uh, contractors and outside employees to uh, rehabilitate the properties. <clears throat> thank Mr. you um, thank you sir next up we have mr darren freedom green um Jeanette smart and i think miss lisa toro in that order and i also see kenneth miles up as well director kenneth okay can you hear me yes i can sir okay good evening and uh respect and salute to the mayor uh, Director Daniels, this is an excellent forum. I would suggest first that we continue to keep doing these. Part of Trent's historical failure isn't on the mayor, isn't on the directors, but a lot of times the public itself is not aware of the laws, the policies that govern the work that we want to do. These forums give us an opportunity to ask questions we really don't know, and we'll also have an opportunity to get it directly from the source. I think sometimes we hypothesize how we want things to play out, and the, govern the governing laws and the governance won't allow us to do such. So I salute you. Continue to keep doing these. I think the updates are important. Uh, I would like to say to Mr. Valiant, I'd like to hear more about the demolition piece in each part of the war. You guys are doing great work. But I'd love to hear you come on and say, hey, we're in the West Ward and we've done and demolished eight properties here. Again, constant conversation. I said this to you when we talked before. We're always talking about nothing happens here. A lot of good stuff is happening here. And I think when we come on and give the data, give what's going on, update from the official source, it's not that you're heard about it. You're doing this work. And, again, if you say we're in the West Ward, we've done eight houses here, it allows people to stop talking Amen. all the negative stuff and speak directly to the good that's occurring here. So that would be something I would encourage to do. But, again, I think the other piece for me, and I'll get off the screen, is we need to address the concentrated poverty. We're not talking about that, and I think you did talk a little bit about it is, again, educating and empowering residents who live here to understand the city has a plethora of, of programs that allow for home ownership. Uh, when Trenton in its heyday was thriving, it was a home ownership thing. You know, I came up on Columbia Avenue and everybody on my street owned homes. I can't even remember a vacant property there. So that and a number of the career development opportunities that exist down at Mercer County Community College, they're doing great work down there. People can actually change the trajectory of their careers, which changes their economic reality, which helps us as a city as a whole. And I think if we can bring that as a part of the dialogue to these forums because just saying it's the vacant properties the vacant properties the vacant properties serve no issue again if we we fix those up and people can't afford to move on or get into them we're still at a standstill and then my last thing would be these updates give us a lot of opportunities to talk about uh some of the some of the community-based issues again the community didn't just fall apart itself and a lot of the people who come on these forums complaining are part of the problem you know, you, uh, that people aren't just committing crime in the community. We as a community have to be responsible as well. And we can't sit here and complain about something but not be a part of the solution for moving it forward. And I just think these are a good thing. I'm saluting uh, the leadership for doing that. But I just said the more information you can bring each time we have them, uh, it does a great service to the city. And it, it clears up a lot of the misconceptions because we think we can just bring local contracting. Now, there's a process that governs that. And certainly, why wouldn't we want local contractors working here? Because if a lot of the young men and women who are on and standing around can have employment opportunities, that cuts down on our public safety issues. And the last piece I'll say, because nobody wants to say it, it would be nice to have our council members involved with this I understand there's a war or whatever they want to frame it between the administration and the council, but we can't have good governance without the mayor, the council, and the people working as one. 
focused on one thing, which is Trenton. And I would love to have the West Ward Councilwoman be a part of what's happening in the West Ward. Uh, I'm Freedom Green. I'm going to say what needs to be said. Keep doing the great work, and I'm here to support that work. Mr. Thanks Green, so much. I, I'll, 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 uh, I'm going to uh, uh, defer to the experts on board, Michael and uh, Andre. Uh, but thank you for those comments. And uh, I think we we are moving forward in spite of some of the challenges. But uh, you're going to see a lot of progress in the city, and it's taken longer than we would have liked. Um, but we're moving full full speed ahead. Council said they didn't want to declare this a rehabilitation corridor like we wanted. So we're doing it house by house, brick at a time by brick. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Mr. Green, for those those comments. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think that when we get intuitive uh, commentary like uh, you just advanced and like, um, I, quite frankly, everyone has advanced so far not only a department, but citywide, we become better. We become one. At the end of the day, we're one Trenton. Um, it's not like the, the Department of Housing and Economic Development is some marauding army uh, that wants to have an encampment on Stuyvesant Avenue. Um, we're one city, and, and quite frankly, you know, if, if there was a question asked to me, what is that thing that I think about at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, it's how can I create change? How can I create, help be part of the part of the process, if you will, the catalyst for change in the capital city? Surely we deserve no less. And absolutely uh, what the best community is in New Jersey, uh, the capital city deserves that. Its residents and its people deserve that. Uh, I would add that um, not only are we looking at demolishing houses on Stuyvesant Avenue, you know, just last Friday I was on a call with some concerned citizens with Councilman uh, Harrison with his group over there with Ms. Verna. And uh, some residents brought up the 100 block of Walnut and the 100 block of Chambers. Well, I went out on Monday and absolutely looked at that. Uh, many of those houses are on our demolition list. We, we have a ranking system um, of houses that we want to get down. Uh, I've, I've directed Michael Valiant to look at that and see how we can bring some of those hazards and, and it, in fact, uh, determine if we have any imminent hazards over there that need to be brought down sooner um, and perhaps moved up on the list. Uh, Mr. Green, you mentioned about creating opportunities of uh, uh, jobs and, and just being inclusive um, within the process. Uh, one of the things that we did was under our Fight to Blight program, which is a comprehensive pro program that uh, Mayor Rico Siora uh, started, uh, facilitated by, and, and, and if you will, the brainchild of uh, principal planner Stephanie Register, to actually look at how we can incorporate um, and bring in more um, local talent to be part of the process. But to do that, we had to necessarily give them the education process. How do you navigate the purchasing department? How do you navigate the department in generally? And, and just making sure that, in fact, your business affairs were in order. Uh, that's something that we, we, we champion. That's something that we very much want to be a part of. Um, I, I, you know, it's not like we're creating this, but we, we are creating it under the guise of uh, Fight the Blight. So, um, you know, Ms. Register would be on the phone um, with us tonight if it weren't for the fact that in her capacity as a principal planner, she's um, on the planning board meeting um, presenting her case, uh, the argument for the, Bell, the Bellevue Rutherford uh, area over in the West Ward. That's a very important Ms. Octavia Sumter uh, and the Neighborhood uh, Improvement Association and, and that very vital work that is being done to, to restore. That's another area. You know, Trenton is, um, it has been said, some 7.5 square miles. Uh, we have many areas within the city that we know that we want to target. Bellevue, Rutherford is one of those. Uh, Stuyvesant is another area that we want to target. And Roblin Block 2, um, just to name a few of those areas that if we could fi finally um, get a hold uh, and, and, and turn those situations around. Uh, it, it's my belief, It's per personally, it's my vision 
um, that the capital city will be well on its way to to becoming that city um, that we all uh, intend and expect. And quite frankly, the work that was done in cooperation with all sectors and stakeholders within the city, um, our master plan, our Trenton 250 master plan, which said that in 2042, our sesquicentennial, that um, we would begin to take shape and 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 look like um, a, a 21st, 22nd, a 21st century um, city, um, being able to compete with some of the best of them. And uh, I think that that was all that I, I wanted to speak to um, just urgently. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Green, you had a question for Michael Valiant. Um, did, was it? You, you, can you reiterate that question, sir? No, no, I, I thought Mike was doing a great job. And I, what I said was when he comes on, I would like to hear because he runs demolition to give an update and say we're in the West Ward now. We've done eight properties. Just give a statistical data update so everybody who tunes in can know that work is being done. Again, I, I'm in the trenches. Every time you turn around, it's always a negative story. So if you say, no, we're on this block here and we've done eight properties and you give that data update, it just gives more clarity that things are being done, work is being done, and we're trying to move forward. I just, I'm just, I'm just tired of all yeah. everything being negative when it comes to our city. I got you, Mr. Green. And I, I sincerely appreciate you saying that. That really means the world to me because all I want to do is do a good job. Uh, and, and this is some hard numbers I can give you now. And, and the director and I, I think, will think about what's the best like format to put out regularly along with these meetings that you suggested doing again because that would be great. I can tell you right now that I have two bids that are done waiting for uh, a resolution vote. That is including the Stuyvesant Ave, uh, or excuse me, Sanford Street demolitions. It's about 19 of them. The, it was going to be 28, but I cut it back down. Um, I cut nine properties off because there was another, like basically if I acquire two more, I can get it done way more cost effectively. So that being said, there's 19 right there. That's, uh, I don't know if you want to write these down, but if you're going to quiz me, it's 21 66. The next one that we have coming up, uh, th that's going to be up for a resolution vote along with that is going to be tw uh, bid 22-07. That's for about 20 imminent hazards throughout the city of Trenton. So it's not particular to award, but what was been reported. And then we have three more bids that we got in last week while I was on vacation. I'm reviewing now. We're going to be looking to, uh, I'm going to look to complete those awards and hopefully have them up for the next council meeting that would be hopefully in April. But, um, but so the total number that that comes out to is about 75 ish. Um, but when I have a real spreadsheet for it to send you, I will. Um, but yeah, like some hard numbers is uh, five bids, about 75 houses throughout the city of Trenton, definitely in those concentrations of blight, but also making sure that we're getting out to where people have reported their problems to us. So um, how will the current residents be impacted by the work once the work begins? and revitalizing Stuyvesant or the other two streets that are mentioned? Well, I think as any uh, construction project will go, um, uh, there'll be minimum, I think, uh, inconvenience to the, uh, to the neighborhoods only because the uh, properties are spread out. So if we work on uh, one home, whether it's demolition or rehabilitation, um, uh, that, that will be the schedule one at a time. Uh, we also will need council's input per property because we, we're, it's not a rehabilitation area. Um, but we're going to uh, try to do it with little disruption as possible. Um, there have been demolitions projects in neighborhoods throughout the city, um, and it, they they come down with rel relatively speed in in a matter of days. Okay, and the revitalization, or if you want to use another word for it, how does that, is there something in place to support people in the communities in those areas that have an income of roughly $35,000 a year? How is it going to help them or those that might want to come into the neighborhood making that kind of money? Well, we'd like to return, uh, 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 affordable housing for affordable housing. Um, what will be impacted is that we believe that there, there, there'll be better safety in the neighborhood uh, by the fact that the, they're not abandoned homes, that they won't have drug drug activity. 
or gang activity. Um, like I said at the beginning, in the last 24 months, we've had four homicides in the in the neighborhood, um, and we believe that those numbers uh, will be a lot safer for for the folks. And again, I brought up the example of Timbuktu Academy. Um, they they would like those properties across the street that are abandoned addressed so that it's not no longer a nuisance property. Um, but we feel that if we rehabilitate a home, um, we could find folks that um, that need affordable housing to move in there. So it will be a replacement of, of a, a house um, with a similar family to the neighborhood. Uh, we're not looking to gentrify. We're, we're a long way off as a city for any kind of gentrification. Um, uh, but we think that it will enhance the quality of life in the neighborhood for everyone if we can get these houses down. Children shouldn't have to walk to school and see a blighted, boarded up property and feel that's the neighborhood I live in. Um, I would much rather see a child on, on their way walking to school um, uh, to see a property that has a family in it, to have other kids that are, uh, that are there that they could play with. Um, and not have to walk past um, somebody who's either um, hanging out on a porch because they know it's abandoned and um, and having uh, drug activity there. Hey, quick I question. Can, I can understand that because I grew up there on the side and my parents bought their house there in 1967. And we still own the property as a family since 1967. The house that we own is 112 years old and we still, family still occupies it from time to time. So it would be lovely to see the revitalization or the coming back to life of Stuyvesant and the neighborhood around it because I have memories of that street in the 60s. I think I talked to some of your neighbors because they they all were proud of that neighborhood. They talked about the glory days when uh, the neighborhood was safe, that they could walk at night. They could walk there during the day. Um, they love to just take a stroll on a Sunday and, and talk to neighbors. And we'd like to return that sense of community uh, back to Stuyvesant Avenue. It's a beautiful uh, tree lined street. Um, that we believe that if uh, taking the 68, there's 68 properties, that is a, a heck of a lot of properties that are abandoned and vacant. Um, if we could, um, if we could take care of them, I think we're going to return to um, some of the memories, the joyful memories that you had of that neighborhood. It would be absolutely lovely. I don't know if you, anyone on call is uh, familiar with Judge Hickenbotham. He's deceased now. He long deceased, but his nephew still lives there on Stuyvesant. He was uh, one of the greatest jurists of uh, in the Trenton area. Yes, he was, and again, his his nephew <laughs> lives there. His family also is a family that was there in the '60s, along with mine. Mm. So there's a lot of good memories and there's a lot of uh, people still in there from way back that would love to see it come back to life so we'll all be out there pulling to help get that going thanks so much man. Thank i really appreciate your comments you're welcome thank you next mr kenneth Ma so what we'll do is i believe it's next mr kenneth miles we have someone that says k guest w ricks crystal feliciano and Lily Kenevic, please excuse me if I'm, I'm butchering someone's name, but first name I believe is Lily in that order. Kenevich. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Daniels, Mayor, I want to commend you and your staff for having this forum. I think it's ex excellent. But I do have a suggestion if you can give a little more lead time so more people from the community can attend the meeting. I, I think that would be helpful. Um, you know, and, and not everyone is is on social media or from what Facebook or what Twitter or anything like that. So maybe old fashioned flyers might might help. Um, I have a question. So the properties that are rehabilitated, what systems are put in place to prevent an investor from buying properties in bulk 
and just hold with them. Absolutely. That is the big fear. But what you could do is put um, deed restrictions um, that they be uh, a home ownership for five years. Um, and you, there are other mechanisms that you could put in there that um, uh, one per customer and, and the like. But uh, yes, there's plenty of developers in there that uh, that knock on our doors and, and Director Daniel speaks on a daily basis. Uh, how can we uh, buy a bunch of investment properties? That's a big question, and um, we usually throw them out of our offices, but politely. Um, but we get it. Um, we don't want this to be um, uh, 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 landlords that are, are out of town that have very little incentive to fix and repair properties. Uh, part of the problem with us is chasing after absentee landlords. Um, we don't need any more absentee landlords, um, and that, and, and not, you know, and I don't, don't want to knock landlords. Uh, uh, you know, there are plenty of honest landlords out there that take care of their properties, that care about their investments. Um, uh, but ideally, you want home ownership, um, and you, you could put a deed restriction that they have to live there for at least five years. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and thank you, Mr. Miles, for that question. And, you know, one of the things that I, that I would uh, also just simply say is that we're at the very, very, very beginning um, of the process. Uh, you know, one of the things that we were simply asking council to give us the, the, the permission was to, to throw this whole thing to the, our planning board to have a preliminary investigation. And within that process of the preliminary investigation, statutorily and by law, certain things have to happen. So one of the things that have to happen is a community meeting, a community meeting designed and, and set up uh, with professionals in mind to ask those uh, probing and, and quite frankly, intuitive questions, what will happen next? Uh, uh, when will it happen? How will it happen? And and who wants to be on board? And and quite frankly, anytime you start talking about construction projects and you start talking about, um, you know, just the, the wholesomeness of being inclusive in a community, you find those stakeholders who who choose to raise their hand and say, "Hey, I want to be part of uh, the facilitation." Um, and, and no good to great project has ever happened without the participation of those residents, uh, quite frankly, who are active and uh, want to be a part of the process and, and, and can help uh, the project move along. So I, I wanted to just simply uh, caution and reach out to everyone um, under the sound of my voice and, and just uh, mention that we're, we're at the very, very, very beginning stages. Um, the process uh, includes uh, many, many community meetings um, designed uh, to get the input and the participation of the community. So I think next we have, after Mr. Miles, it was W. Rick's guest. Are you there, Mr. Ricks? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, ma'am. Yes. Okay, hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, I hear everything that you're uh, saying and in the preliminary of everything and moving forward. But prior to everything, I do believe that there should involve some type of cleanup before the project. You know, it has to be some form of massive cleanup before may we begin to materialize this vision, not only your vision, but our vision as a community and a lifelong resident. I understand we want to maybe demolish, refurbish, rehabilitate these homes, but there has to be a form of some type of massive cleanup. In addition to the massive cleanup, the I know it was mentioned that there's a um, neighborhood improvement association, but also I know it was mentioned that a council person from maybe that war should be included. In addition to that council person, have a community homeowner representative to represent that community from Stuyvesant Avenue that may have some input on a current basis to 
what's going on so we as homeowners can see exactly what's what's occurring and also give our input and also simple things lighting safety security uh you, you drive down Stuyvesant at in the evening i heard that was mentioned what do you see the light poles the fixtures they're off safety is paramount that that's that's very important that's very important to everyone i can go on but obviously i can't but um yeah just it's, it's just starting starting with those things you need cleanups <laughs> you need lighting you need safety and security for everyone in that neighborhood to feel safe yeah miss ricks i i, I can't disagree yes. with anything you've said and, and it's all constructive um criticism or or input uh, first of all, uh, Councilman Joe Harrison is on, so I want to thank him for uh, his input. He's been down Stuyvesant Avenue many times, and um, and he's going to be part of this process as well. Um, uh, I'm glad you brought up cleanup. We're actually putting a proposal before Council mm -hmm. to have um, community cleanup uh, uh, weekends per ward so that okay. um, folks could bring out bulk garbage and um, we're going to pay our sanitation workers overtime uh, to collect the garbage and, and help clean up those neighborhoods. We're also in the process of that entire uh, strip is going to be um, uh, repaved. We're going to repave Stuyvesant Avenue. We're also going to put in new curbing, new sidewalks. Um, so, yes, we hear you loud and clear that it has to be. OK, yeah, I'm going to. Has to be holistic and um, I think. Again, we want to enhance the neighborhood, and um, there are people that are so proud of the neighborhood that do deserve to live in a, a safe and clean neighborhood. So, we're yeah, here I'm, I'm, I'm still there. So, yeah. appearance safety is paramount, and yeah. that's that's where it starts. I see that you're mentioning about, you know, I'm looking at the comments. I don't know if everyone is looking at the comments, but we are concerned with you know contractors you know whosoever coming in and being awarded bids okay bids or that but you know it's a preliminary it's a flow chart from the very beginning you know you need appearance you know you have your sidewalks you have your your potholes those are all the beginning process when if you're comparing to other maybe suburban or rural communities that's where it begins it's not just demolishing yes we know you're going to demolish but what are your preliminary plans and th there it is your light fixtures do you have or you got to be proactive do you have individuals that know to say okay yeah you know Stuyvesant Avenue if you drive there now we, we have multiple street lights out and in the beginning you mentioned I even had a question written down what's the count on the abandoned homes and I if I confirm you said 68 68 68 that's a lot for that strip of road Absolutely. That, that's a lot so I, I mean that's I think we're, that's why we're addressing there where we've we've taken okay. where the, the the worst concentration of abandoned homes um, and we want to address them and we want to do a holistic uh, solution and we do want to address the roads, the sidewalks, the curbs, even the trees we're going to be addressing as well. So, so to Mrs. Rick's point, she's making a really, really valid point, but is there, I mean, there has to be a practice that was done prior. You guys had to redevelop another area in Trenton. Where is the, the I guess, best practices that you guys learned through that process? Um, she's mentioning some good ideas, but are you guys implementing what has worked in the past and are, are applying to this, this, this particular area? And then when would that information be public published to share with the community um, so the community is aware of those improvements? Because like you said, if, if it's not being visibly seen, no one's going to be able to know it. So I think that she's making a really, really good point about these are small, low hanging fruit items that if those aren't being done and completed within the community, what, what makes the community believe you demolishing the areas is going to automatically revamp a community and revitalize a community because there's more ingredients to it. And if we don't do, you know how they say, if you're a good steward over little, you'll be a good steward over much. If we can't do the little things, the roads, the lights, simple things, we're not even doing that downtown at all. So how, how can we even move forward knowing that's not being done? That's a good point. Yeah, um, well taken. Um, uh, we've had many, many years of neglect. I mean, just look at Stuyvesant Avenue alone, but we've taken over 200 houses down. Um, we're also in the process of rehabilitating houses. We have a separate program. 
Um, we've auctioned off uh, well over 200 properties uh, that are going back on the tax rolls. Um, so there are a number of balls in the air. This is the first time we're taking on an entire neighborhood. Um, uh, the, the other projects have been house by house or row houses by row house. Suites Avenue is another example where we've taken down many homes. Sanford a Avenue, 31 out of 32 homes uh, have to be taken down uh, because it's so far gone. Um, so uh, it's happening all at once. It's been, it's been in the planning stage for the last three years. I know that uh, people would like to see results uh, instantly. Um, there, there is a lot of planning. We had to um, fix some of the pipes uh, first. That's why you see a lot of um, these strips of, uh, of uh, asphalt where uh, Trenton Water has come in. You've seen instances where PSE and G has had to fix their, um, their infrastructure. And so the next um, item is uh, is doing the roads, the curbs, and the and the sidewalks. Thank you. But, but to our point, can we think high level though? Can we think? Okay, you just mentioned all of these different sectors or buckets of areas that have been improved upon. All right, what were the results? Did those areas improve home ownership? Because if that if we practice that and it hasn't worked in the past, maybe we need to revamp it. Maybe we need to look at it from a different lens. But in those particular areas where we've already demolished and we've already knocked them, what has happened in those areas? You can't. You can't get a develop. Talking to developers, they don't want. Um, they don't want the expense of of uh, of taking down houses and 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 uh, and then uh, rebuilding. So the city is going to have to do it. And before you can attract a developer, you have to make the area. Um, attractive for the developers, and that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Okay. I, I um, Mike thank missed, you. Mike, to add, did Mike want to add something to that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. If you don't mind, uh, Miss Miss Rex, I just wanted to um, give you two thoughts, because you mentioned uh, you and uh, the other gentleman mentioned about high level things, and as well as you know, like demolition is not beautification. That is absolutely 100% like a, totally in front of our minds. We are not just going to demo like, you know, needlessly and say, all right, like we've, we've got like what we need here done. Uh, for starters, I can tell you that sidewalk repair is mandated in this demolition spec so that when demolition contractors do begin and finish their work, they will not only secure that site with a fence that's um, six foot high engaged, but also they will fix, uh, redo the sidewalk there. There is a little difficulty with the tree roots you might be familiar with, with those big ones, but don't worry. Per the spec, they are obligated to fix that sidewalk and ensure that it's, uh, you know, passes inspection. Um, and the second thing that I could tell you is that from, uh, now I work particularly with the rehab and demolition construction. So you are right. I can't touch on things that or outside of the scoop. But what I can tell you is like those little things that you talked about getting right, the imminent hazards are. Though they are the first things that we can get right. Um, and following up with them with this bid that we're trying to get to council now, um, you know, it is like being a steward of the little things that we have control over. And this is one thing that we can get out to the community right away and also get work started on within this quarter or like, you know, hopefully so that way by the summertime you're seeing, you know, people swinging hammers and nothing else. Um, so uh, that's all I wanted to add. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Well, hopefully thank you, Ms. Rick. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hopefully, those small things lead to, as someone as as someone mentioned, a holistic approach, and you know, just just bigger things. Appearance will lead to wholeheartedly, you know, us feeling safe and community involvement, us bringing peace. It's, it has right. to start somewhere. No, right. I, I, we, we we agree with you one hundred percent. You know, and, and one of the things that I, you know, I saw a comment, and 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 it's not lost on my mind, and it's surely not the mayor's mind, is that, you know, you're talking about sixty eight blighted houses that we either will demolish or rehabilitate. That right now, in in many instances, where the city is receiving zero back by way of taxes. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, when when we can re rehabilitate or in, create, in fact, create new opportunities, um, the, the city is now realizing uh, additional revenue. Um, and in a distressed city uh, like Trenton, quite frankly, um, that's a, that's a source of income that that we we need and 
we we look forward to having and uh it, it moves the city forward no one wants to see that that type of blight no one wants to see empty houses uh the mayor mentioned earlier um when you know children are walking to school that's that's their orientation that is their uh climate and culture that we're right now quite frankly looking to make better so next up i have mm -hmm. at the mr miles uh, it was in miss ricks um i believe we have miss feliciano thank you good evening can you hear me yes ma'am okay thank you so first off to to mayor uh Gossiara and to you director daniels thank you for the forum tonight i won't be before you long because i got another meeting that i have to get to so shout out to y'all for doing this here's my thing um when we talk about the the um the auctions and things like that right the criteria kenneth had actually brought that up when he said about stopping the um investors buying and holding but my question is is there anything where you would actually when it is an investor look into the background of the investor like are you looking at the former properties or current properties that they do own what is the condition um, do you have somebody that is investigating what is going on? Because my concern is I don't want us to just auction off and just go for the money, right? And then it's like an extension of credit, right? They they go by your credit score, your credit rating. That is important. So, you know, do we have something in place where you actually rate the investors that would be looking? Because it's sad when we would turn it over to someone who would end up being a slum landlord or just leaving the property to fall apart when we have good people here that if they just had the opportunity, right, to be a homeowner, then it could have gone to them. So what is the criteria that we have? And if we don't have it, do you plan on implementing something? Is that possible to help us moving forward? Very quickly, if, if the area is in need of rehabilitation, it's a designated a rehabilitation zone, you can do that. You can score uh, the prospective buyer. If you had land banking, you could do that. If you don't have those two, the only mechanism to get rid of properties are to auction them off and whoever's the highest bidder. So, um, And then you, you can't control whether the person is going to be a homeowner or um, a, a landlord. So we do need ultimately... Um, uh, council to agree that it should be a rehabilitation area or allow us to have land banking. Absent that, they go to auction to the highest bidder. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think next we have Ms. Lily Kaninovich. And what we'll do then is I'll, I'll give the mayor an opportunity to close out. Um, uh, we, we really want to thank everyone. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Um, I'll give Councilman Harrison an opportunity and then I'll throw it back to the mayor uh, to speak on the matters. Um, we, we had designated one hour, um, 60 minutes of, of time tonight. Uh, don't want to belabor and hold anyone up. Um, I'm sure many people have other meetings to jump on too. Uh, as a quick commercial, I understand that the Bellevue Rutherford was passed out of um, the planning board and now moves on to uh, the council um, to, uh, for their approval to look at. You know, these are this is hope and opportunity. You know, this is, is, is this is the fabric and this is part of the work um that uh the housing and the economic department uh is this is what we do quite frankly um kudos and and special thanks to Ms. stephanie register um her, her hard work and and bringing that um to uh the planning board and um like to mention also her supervisor uh jeff wilkson up there in that area so if miss lily um Kaninovich, if you you have a question yeah, I'll be very quick. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much to you, yourself, Director, and the Mayor, and the other city leaders that are here. Really important conversation, great, com great comments. I want to thank you. I, I do want to make one comment, one quick question, which is rehabbing. I'm all in favor of rehabbing where it makes financial sense because that's revitalizing to the community, too. When people see a property being rehabbed, it, it, it gives hope, I think, to the neighbors and the community. But I drove down to Stuyvesant uh, the, yesterday, the day before, and near Prospect I saw that um, a couple of houses that were being 
demolish. Is that part of this program? That's my only question. And thank you again. Uh, that will be a Michael question. It would. Uh, the houses towards, houses towards Prospect Street um, are that are under dem demolition right now. Are they are projects or private projects? Okay. Thanks. Uh, ma'am, I'm sorry, ma'am. I believe those are pro uh, private projects, or maybe they might be imminent hazard demolitions that uh, Department of Inspections is running. I could definitely follow up with that and have an answer for you tomorrow if you can send me your email address. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, that's the best answer I can give for you. Okay, no problem. I was just curious. I'm, I, I, you know, I don't live on Stuyvesant. I live near, but not actually on Okay. No, well, we thank you for that question, and um, we'll get you an answer. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Before I close out, I'd just like to thank everybody once, twice, three times mm -hmm. on behalf of my department. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reminded every day that I, I walk into a department of men and women who are professionals who rise and fall uh, simply to change the fabric of uh, the capital city. Who, who simply come in and, and are, are visionaries uh, who, who wear their hearts on their sleeve and uh, want a better Trenton and, the, you know, the time, talent and the treasury uh, of their expertise work hard every day. Um, to, to bring before me, to bring before uh, this the, the mayor, to bring before this council uh, projects um, that move the city, that move towards its betterment, uh, to move it to a place that will uh, make it attractive, uh, that people will want to live, work, play, uh, and, and, and grow here. Um, many of the people here in Trenton talk about the, the, the legacy or the past. And what we simply want to do, if, if we can't return it to that, uh, what Trenton made, um, the world takes, then we, we want to bring it to front and center, to something new, something visionary, something beautiful. Um, so i like to thank everybody for take, finding in that robbery to be on this call. Uh, please look forward uh, to more opportunities like this as, as the weeks and the months um, descend upon us. And uh, by all means, if, if I can be of any uh, aid and or assistance, you can reach me at 609-989-3520. Or you can email me at C. Daniels, C. Daniels, D-A-N-I-E-L-S, at TrentonNewJersey.org. And with that, um, I would like to turn um, over to uh, Councilman Joseph A. Harrison. And the next sound you will hear after that will be from our man, Harry Garcia. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Daniels, for coming on the conference call. Thank you to Mayor. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Stephanie Register, for Fight the Blight. Um, thank you for Octavia for the Bellevue Avenue. It's wonderful when we work together in this city. It's so it's so uh, great to see people calling on here and wanting to be a part of fixing the city and moving forward. So I want to just come on here and just say thank you. I wish more of my colleagues would come on here. Um, but at the end of the day, it's great to see the community stepping up and, and telling the mayor and everybody else involved what they want to see in the community. So it's a blessing. So thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to be on here tonight. Thank you, Councilman. <clears throat> thank you, Director. And I, I think this was indeed a productive meeting that we'd like to have more of as the, as the progress, progress of the project uh, goes on. Uh, we'd also like to... Um, um, post what we're doing um, that will be on our talktrenton.org um, uh, website uh, so that more comments can come from the community. Uh, we will be reaching out more to the, the homeowners along Stuyvesant Avenue and make sure that they're well aware of, of the progress that we're going. But the first thing you'll see is the uh, nine houses that are in the uh, worst conditions uh, coming down and um, we're also at simultaneously working on the roads, the curbs, and the uh, sidewalks. But thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, I didn't expect this, this much of a turnout, but we, we did try to get the word out as much as we could. And uh, please look out for uh, further meetings down the line. But thanks so much, and uh, take care, and be safe. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.
Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thanks. And thanks, Joe, for joining us. And thank you, Director. You did a great job. And Michael, you did a great job. And everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, keep it here. I'm following Uh, I think we're spread out enough that it's good.